What up, Smart Rapper Gang? In this video, I'm gonna answer the question that I think that every single music artist, especially from the beginning of their career, when they start getting good at writing lyrics, they ask this question, how can I sell my bars? How can I sell my lyrics? How can I become a ghostwriter? Because if I love making music, how am I going to be able to sell these lyrics, right? Let me get some money, I can invest that in my career maybe. And this video specifically is gonna be for those of you who are in the earlier stages of your career to understand something, to understand how the industry works and to understand, well, you're gonna see. I wanna explain this to you because I feel like I I would have loved to have been able to sell my bars. I wasn't even thinking like this. I got a DM from a kid. I wasn't even thinking from the beginning, hey, I should sell my bars. I, that didn't even cross my mind. Oh, but in his circumstance, he was saying he's not that good behind the mic, but he thinks he can write really well. She'd like to be able to sell his bars. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be mean in this video. I'm never trying to be mean. It's only to give you guys feedback, but I'm always very blunt with you. I don't wanna lie to you. I don't wanna like sugarcoat it because life's hard. The industry's hard. It's gonna take hard work. And the sooner you understand that, the faster you're gonna excel at anything that you decide to do in your life. He ain't lying. Okay, so I don't like sugarcoating stuff. I like being straight up with you. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you this. This is what the kid said. He sent me this DM. He said, how do I sell bars? I think I'm terrible behind the mic. Now I'd like to make some kind of money doing this. And you know, I just write to get stuff off my mind. Any advice? And you know, look at my immediate response was, you legit cannot sell bars unless you're on the inside. Bro. That's not all the response. And that's why I'm making this video. I respect his amount of confidence in thinking that that's even something that's possible. I want you all to have this type of open mind. This kid has 23 followers. Whoa. He's maybe 14 years old and bro I'm not picking on you this is only to help you Dang. remember you're helping a lot of people because you asked me this question and a lot of people are gonna see this so you know go follow this kid that's the only reason I'm even showing this thing right I support you I love that you're open-minded enough to think that where you're at you could actually sell bars I love that yeah. okay I love that confidence I never would have thought like that I never would have had that confidence even when I was like super amazing at the same age you were uh. okay so let's start with this doesn't everybody write their lyrics, right? Everybody writes their lyrics. I can't really name many people who are just, they don't like writing lyrics if they really wanna be a music artist. There are a certain number of people who don't like writing or they're just not that good at writing. Oh, but man. let's think about you right now listening to this video. Don't you believe that you're incredible writing lyrics? Whether you're 14, you're 18, you're 27, you're 40, you probably feel like you're one of the best lyricists alive, you're incredible at writing lyrics. Well, here's the thing. Every other rapper thinks the same thing. And no offense, but usually, even though you think that, you're not really that great. What are you saying? Trust me, I know because I've done a lot of reviews and the guys come into my room, they're like, yo, they're like, I'm super hot, I'm super good, I'm super hot, super, super hot fire, so whatever the hell they, they say at the time, it makes sense, that's relevant. And then they say something, I'm like, you realize like that's generic. I'm sorry. Everybody thinks that they're amazing. I call that rapper disease. But it's also a mandatory part of how we evolve and grow as music artists because we have to tell ourselves that we're great because everybody else is laughing at us. So we have to be confident in ourselves. So I'm not trying to take away from anybody here. We all start somewhere. But what I'm trying to get at is if everybody thinks they're amazing, what? how are you possibly going to convince somebody to want to buy your lyrics? And that doesn't even make sense. Especially if you don't already have a track record. And let me explain another end of this to you. How would you possibly DM artists and say, hey, bro, let me write lyrics for you. You know people have done that to me? Yeah. Do you know how insanely offensive that is yeah. when you say that to an artist who writes his own lyrics? Because it's like you're saying that your lyrics are better than mine, even though I'm a professional, seasoned, undefeated battle rapper with top 100 projects, self-made from the ground up. And I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to sound like I'm bragging or anything else like that. It's just like, I've worked very hard to get here. I've been on the front page of Rap Genius as most lyrical. Like, I worked very hard to get here, right? And then somebody will come out and like, be, I'm better than you. That's the rapper disease talking. Ooh. They'll be like, I can write lyrics for you, bro. These verses could be better. No, they, no, they can't. I'm writing quadruple entendres. They're all, they're all, it's so, it, they're all going over your head. I don't write anything that's not super, like, insane. And you're not even understanding the bars. That's how not good at bars most of these people are at writing bars. Bars. They don't even understand half the stuff that's being said because whoo, whoo, going right over the damn head. Anyways, see how I reacted to that? and got all fired up. You don't think that that's going to happen to every single artist that you say, hey, let me write your bars, bro. It's too offensive. That's not how that works. So there's that additional barrier to you making it straight into the music industry. And anyway, shape or form because you don't reach out to 500 rappers before one of them says maybe and then when they see your profile and they see your age or they see or they, uh, they don't have your track record then you got to worry about them thinking they're gonna steal your lyrics because you're like here let me show you a verse also he specifically said I'm not that great behind the mic <laughs> the thing is, is if you're gonna sell lyrics the other side of it is that you have to be able to typically demo those lyrics to know not only the lyrics but how they sound and also if you cannot flow if you cannot 
deliver the lyrics or don't even know, understand how to deliver the lyrics, you only know how to write them. You don't understand when they come out of your head to come out your mouth, it's different. If you're rapping in your head and you're rapping like this, but you don't understand how to say them out loud onto the microphone or flow them, you can't even sell those verses because it's not going to translate. Even if you're going to sell verses, you have to know how to lay them down as demos. And a great example was Quentin Miller, okay? He was writing a lot of Drake's verses. He's a really good writer. But if you went and listened to Quentin, even on the demos, it sounded like garbage, but it still showed Drake how to do the initial, you know, delivery of the of it. But Quentin Miller did not have any sauce at all. He had negative sauce. He was like lasagna with just cheese. <laughs> He had no sauce at all, so Come when he would on. deliver lyrics, it just was garbage. And that's why his career didn't take off even after he had all that buzz, because he his music sucked, but he was really good at writing. And then Drake would take the same lyrics and deliver them, but it's also because Quentin had already shown him, here's how this this flow's gonna go, here's how this is, and then Drake would do that and then sauce it up, okay? So you have to, even if you wanna sell your bars, you have to understand, you're gonna have to be able to lay these demos down. Yes, and sir. if you really wanna get across somebody, you can write a bunch of verses, and then you can you have to deliver them on a beat to show them how that's gonna be delivered. Or you need to get the person to agree what? to send you a beat that they're working on right now and you could write a verse blah blah blah. it is so ridiculously difficult to be able to be a ghostwriter and also let me leave you with this if you think you're possibly going to be able to be a ghostwriter if you're not capable of writing hooks huh? stop it if you want to be a ghostwriter you need to learn how to make an entire song not just the lyrics and getting good at hook writing takes years of being on the microphone learning how to deliver learning how to fluctuate melodies learning how to get the tone and the style down even for a demo track to send to somebody so it's a long road to being a ghostwriter i don't think that any Anybody that's watching this video should attempt to start down the road of thinking that you're gonna make it as a ghostwriter. I truly and honestly so hardcore believe, especially with the resources that every artist has nowadays, such as Smart Rapper, to chase and propel their career and believe in themselves because I help you stay confident with these videos. I help you believe in yourself. I help you believe in your lyrics. I help you believe in moving forward. It's gonna be exceptionally harder now that, that these resources exist to be able to convince somebody that they can't do it themselves, especially when I promote the fact that you guys can do everything yourself. Come on. I just think that it's gonna be more difficult to be a ghostwriter than it is to actually make it as a music artist because of that. Damn, so if you want to be a ghostwriter, either way, you're still going to have to write hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs and record them to even get good enough to be able to do demos to show people. Gee. You know how many people want to be ghostwriters? I am a full-time music artist and I'm writing songs for other artists because if I make a song that's not necessarily for me, I'm like, okay, you know who sound good, good with this? Beyonce would be great for this. Post Malone, you know how many songs I have ready for Post Malone? Justin Bieber records. He's like, what? You rap? No, I sing too. You have no idea. I already have major artist placements, guys. I have for years. Okay, and now I'm even better. Okay, like, because I, I keep practicing, I keep stretch, stretching, getting in my limits. Right? I never would have been able to do a Post Malone record, never would have even attempt it. Now I get hit Post Malone notes and everything like that, send a demo, and I, I could sell him songs right now, okay? So if your goal is to be a ghostwriter, you're going to have to get good at being an artist and a creative in here first. Easy. The same way that every other artist is. There's a lot of songwriters out there that become superstars, but th when they start off as songwriters, a lot of the labels don't let them be artists because they think, well, this this not really worth the money. They're better off writing songs for other artists, and there's some great examples, okay? Like, we got Neo. He's an incredible songwriter. You might even know who that is. Right? Neo's incredible, okay? You, Lady Gaga was writing songs for other people for, for a minute before they even let her, and then look at her superstar status. You have Katy Perry. She was writing songs, I think, for eight years for other artists. That's why when she finally blew up, she was like 28, and she was like a grown woman doing children's songs because she was been writing those children's songs since she was like 20. We're talking about superstars. Like you were ghostwriters, you were writing songs for other people. There's a bunch more examples. You got Ryan Tedder writing a bunch of songs for Beyonce. He's written songs for Tory Lanez. He's written songs for like all these different artists. And he also is the lead singer of uh, One Republic. He's been signed to Timbaland for over, you know, he was signed over 10 years ago. Black hit songs, right? And he still writes songs for himself, but then he also writes songs for these other artists and then has demos for them. You can do both. So what I'm saying with all this is, if you want to be a ghostwriter, be an artist first. And when you're writing songs, you're like, well, this isn't really for me, but I love this song that goes into a different folder in a different pocket where you say hey if i'm ever in the studio with this person i can show them this and that's what i have hundreds hundreds of those is what i have right because if i'm creating and I'm, I'm feeling something i create it if i don't use it now i use it later right if i'm not going to use it now maybe i can sell it later i mean even bruno mars writes songs for other artists and he's a superstar writing his own songs this is the industry but if you think you're going to get in and sell your bars just bars that's not going to happen if you think you're going to get in and be able to do it without being able to record a demo and show them what it's supposed to sound like that's not going to work either okay sorry for being harsh on anybody if you watch this far i appreciate you i just wanted to get that across get that off my mind and let you guys know that all right be an artist first you want to sell bars keep writing get better practice become an artist then be both that's really the goal that's what i'm talking about all right i'm rob level this is smart rapper hit me to subscribe hit me to comment below what do you think and keep hustling gang i'll see you at the top